everybody. It's uh, about a minute or two after seven o'clock. Um, just a brief introduction. Uh, my name is Ray Brigatti. I'm the regional manager at Home and Powers. Um, to my left, the gentleman is uh, Ken Baldwin. Ken is our zoning attorney with Robinson Cole. Um, I thought tonight, after the intros, I would just give a brief presentation on who Homeland is, uh, what my role is with the company, um, describe the project itself that's proposed right now at 90 Half Mile Road, and then I would turn it over to Attorney Baldwin to speak about the actual zoning process, where we go from here after tonight's meeting, um, what the, the need is, in this case for Verizon, and then he'll wrap it up with um, speaking about the environmental aspects of the project as well. Um, this is a public information meeting, it's not a hearing. I think um, this is being taped by your local access, public access. If there's questions afterwards, I think maybe we reserve the questions and we'll have everybody come up to the microphone. You can state your name and address, um, what the question is. We'll do our best to answer those questions tonight. If there's something that we're not sure of, we'll take it as a homework assignment and we'll certainly follow back up with you. Um, as I mentioned, I'm Ray Brigadi of Holman Towers. Uh, Holman is a tower developer. We're out of Danbury, Connecticut. Uh, what I mean by a tower developer, we're a company that simply builds the infrastructure for the carriers, such as Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, Dish Wireless, and of course, public safety. Um, Verizon, in this case, is a joint applicant with Holman Towers on this project. We're simply building the infrastructure. We are the real estate folks. We go out and secure a site. The carriers rely on us to spend the money to develop these sites. We don't prove the need, the carriers prove the need. Um, I've been doing this for about 23 years, and there's a process for this. I want everybody in this room this evening to know it's not an open and closed case, not an open and closed process. It's a very transparent process, it's a public process, there'll be public hearings, and Ken will discuss that. Um, as my role, with Homeland Towers in finding sites. Um, there's certain criteria that I look for in the industry. Uh, the site has to be usable for the carriers. It has to fit their criteria for the network. This is very site specific. Um, maybe you want to close that door with the, the kids playing in the gym there. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. The criteria that I'm mentioning is very specific for the carrier's network. Um, we don't just throw a, a dart at the map and figure out where we're going to put a tower. We work very closely with the RF, the radio frequency engineers, and they will provide us direction on um, where the search should be located in a geographical area. This site must hand off to other sites, the surrounding sites where a carrier is located on a rooftop, on another existing tower, and so forth. Uh, so that's the first criteria. It really has to fit for the carrier's network. Uh, second criteria is I have to have a site that is um, leasable. I have to have an interested landlord. Um, obviously, we can talk about sites that were reviewed at tonight's meeting, but proposals go out, they have dialogues with landlords. Some respond that they're interested, some respond that they're not interested. Uh, but at the end of the day, we have to be able to enter into a ground lease with the landlord. In this case, we did enter into a ground lease with the, the owners of 90 Half Mile Road. Um, the other criteria is affording power can be built. Um, we have to vet, and I say we, the carriers and, and, and homeland, uh, that no existing structures can be used. And what I mean by that is you can't use an existing tower that's nearby. But maybe Verizon's already on it, or it doesn't work for this geographic area, or you can't go on a water tank that's nearby, or a billboard, or another structure, a large, tall rooftop. Um, once those are vetted and ruled out, you have to build a tall wall land site, a new macro site for power structure. That's another third criteria. And then the fourth criteria is it really has to be zonable, uh, constructible, meaning I can't build a site in the middle of a swamp. Could I get there? Yes, you can engineer on sand in these days, but the site has to be reasonable to be constructed. I can't build it up a straight hill on a mountain side with steep slopes. I can't build it in a wetland. So it's got to check the boxes as far as being zonable and constructible. So we look at the geographic area, we approach landlords, let us go out, we lock down on a lease with the landlord, and then at that point, we move forward mm -hmm. with the process. Um, I'll give a brief overview of what we're talking about here. I guess I needed a bigger room for that. <laughs> How you doing? Sorry about that. No worries. 
So this yellow outline is the uh, just a GIS outline of the 4.89 acre parcel. It's zoned as R40. It is a vacant lot. There's no existing structures or use on the property. For bearings, half mile road runs basically east to west. Route 17 runs over here. You've got the East Haven town line in this direction to the east. Ken, if you want to go to the second slide. This is simply an aerial view of the, uh, of the property. This rectangle in black outline is the proposed compound itself. We have an existing access drive coming in off of Half Mile Road. This already exists, it's a dirt road. I wouldn't envision any improvement, possibly some gravel being put down in some areas, but it's been a road that typically already handles heavy construction equipment. Um, and this goes from Half Mile Road, approximately 450 feet to where the facility is proposed in the southwest corner of the 4.89 acre parcel. This particular diagram is a close-up of the compound. Uh, this is the access drive coming in. Um, the compound, the square that you see here, this is the, the fenced compound. Um, I know it's kind of hard to see on this. Is the dotted line like paved area? This dotted line is the property, the dark dotted oh, line, line. Property. Right. Yeah. The compound itself is a roughly 58 by 68 fenced compound. I mean by fence is typically a chain link fence that goes around for security purposes. Um, the lease area itself, if you read the materials, is roughly 70 by 80, 5,600 square feet overall. But the compound itself is roughly 3,886 square feet. Within this particular compound, in the center here is the pole. We show this round circle. Uh, this rectangle, 12 by 20 location, is Verizon's equipment. All of our sites are designed, as I mentioned earlier, for four carriers and public safety. So we design our compounds to accommodate four carriers, at least four carriers, along with public safety. Uh, these are the gates that come into the compound itself. This is an actual closer view of Verizon's 12 by 20. On their typical and they do various designs. They'll do a steel platform sometimes that's raised. Other times they'll do a simple concrete uh, pad. But on that 12 by 20 platform or pad, they'll place their electronics. What I mean by that is you typically the, uh, their electronics, their radios, that go in a cabinet, typically the size of a refrigerator. Uh, they'll have their radios. They'll also have a, a generator for backup generation. Should the site fail, um, there is the, uh, the use of a generator at the site. Uh, utilities are brought in underground. Uh, in this case, United Illuminating UI is the, uh, the local uh, provider for, for power in the area. Um, we've done a utility consultation walk with UI. There would be a proposed new pole set out by the driveway entrance on the north side of Half Mile Road. Um, from there, there would be uh, a trench on the ground utilities that would go to the site, and those utilities would be both uh, electric and fiber. The sites need electricity to run the equipment. They need fiber for the backhaul to make the site work with the network. Um, typically, it's a trench on the ground. There's two, three-inch conduits that go into that trench, and they go right up to the compound. Typically, the electric company, be it UI or Eversource, will have a meter backboard on the outside of our fence. It's typically a six-meter bank, just similar to your home. You see that glass-looking round. That's a, that's a meter. Um, Excuse me. Sure, sorry, come on wait. in. No worries. I know. The um, answer is if this chair is available. No. Thank you. Thank you. So the utilities in this case would be done through uh, United Illuminating. Um, so you want to go to the next, next slide? I'm very well versed in everybody going to have it. See, I'm going to sit back. This is a schematic, an elevation profile of the tower. Um, I don't want you to look at this and think this is exactly what it's going to be at the end of the day. There's a lot of give and take, and Ken will talk to that process of the signing house. But right now, today, we are proposing a 150 foot monopole structure. Uh, monopole to galvanized pole. It's designed with Verizon at the top. Uh, Verizon is proposing to have nine panel antennas. What I mean by a panel antenna, it's simply an antenna roughly four feet long. Um, they're proposing nine of them, and then they've got various radio heads, which are more like boxes that go up on the tower. 
The mounts are standoff mounts. They're proposing three of them. There's three sectors. The sectors effectively look out to where the signal needs to be propagated, where the coverage gaps are currently being existed. At the top of the tower, you may see a little, looks like a stick coming off here. Um, we've reached out to the town of North Haven, uh, as we always do, to understand what the public safety needs are. I've had numerous conversations um, <coughs> with the town, with the fire chief, with the company that handles the public safety network for the town. Um, they've expressed a strong interest to place a UHF antenna with an eight-foot antenna at the top of the tower, and it's for what they call the MED-12, Channel 12 for ambulance. Um, so that's what the particular UHF antenna represents. In addition, the emergency, man emergency management folks here in North Haven with the town have expressed a need or a desire to place a camera on top of the tower as well for emergency management. Um, I want to stress, I've been doing this for 23 years. This is critical infrastructure. Just like water, sewer, electric, gas, um, it's a wireless world. The people rely on cell phones, the first responders rely on cell phones. So there's an issue that's going on where there's an ambulance going to the hospital in New Haven or any hospital. They rely on their personal cell phones to communicate with those, with those hospitals. The ambulance drivers, the people in the back of the ambulance, use specialized equipment that works off a wireless network. It's not a radio network, it's a wireless network to transmit EKGs, vital information, and very private, that can't be broadcast over a radio system that's public. And they rely on cellular technology, a Verizon network, or an at t network, to really do their job effectively to save lives. They can, so, they can. I, Ken, if you want to go to the next slide, I think... Get uh, to the box next. Yeah. Ray, if you don't mind, could you go back to the camera? Because that's the first that I've seen of that. I didn't see that in the statement. But what type of camera? What are you going to be doing? And what is, what's the purpose I of that? I don't know. It's a, I'll take that as a homework assignment. I know the Emergency Management Office of North Haven. The North Haven has proposed this camera. Uh, from my understanding, in talking to them, it's literally like a foot, foot by foot. I, I'm not concerned about the size of it. I'm concerned about what is it viewing and what's, what's the purpose, the purpose of it. Yeah. I think, and I can't speak for them, but as far as, you know, emergency management, I would think if there's fire going on, they want to be able to, you know, know what's going on. If there's a fire, potentially. Yeah. 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 But I'm happy to take that as a mark of science and figure out exactly what they're using here. So you met with our emergency management group? Yes, I do. All right, Mr. Frieder didn't express that to us. I've spoken and met with them, corresponded with them. So Who'd you meet with? Uh, Paul, who's your fire chief. Um, now, you just said fire chief once before, and now emergency management. So is it the same person? I don't know if it's the same person. I think, actually, maybe there's a gentleman by the name of... Um, I want to say there's another gentleman by the name of Ron who may be out of New Haven who handles the emergency management for, uh, for the town of people. Names, departments, yeah. last name. I'll get that for you. Absolutely. That's okay. Okay. I deal a lot with names. So. So, are we. Um, so I'll turn it over to Ken Baldwin. He can talk about the process and uh, we can go from there. Thanks, Ray. Uh, good evening, everybody. Again, Ken Baldwin with Robinson & Cole. Uh, I represent Homeland Towers in this matter and also represent Verizon Wireless. I've been representing Verizon for the last 30 years. Um, here in Connecticut with site development uh, like this. Um, as Ray may have mentioned, th this site, the development of this site, the ultimate approval of this site is under the exclusive jurisdiction of a state agency called the Connecticut Siting Council. They have, again, exclusive jurisdiction. Their jurisdiction preempts local zoning authority by statute. Uh, they have jurisdiction over other facilities, electric transmission lines, power plants, um, electric substations, uh, basically the, the heavy utility infrastructure here in the state of Connecticut um, is handled by the Connecticut Siting Council. Um, the Siting Council process, let me start with that, uh, kicks off with the submission of technical information. Uh, back on August 15th, we submitted a technical <coughs> report to the first selectman. Um, I see some of you have copies of that information. That information is available here in town. Uh, if you're interested in receiving a copy of that technical report, I'm happy to send it to you. Just come up and see me afterwards and give me an email address. I can email you that document tomorrow. 
Um, once that, op that technical report is submitted, we have to wait 90 days before we submit an application to the Siting Council. In that 90 days, in that 90 days, um, we are encouraged to meet with municipal officials, hold public information meetings like this, um, in an effort to get information out about the facility. Um, it's not, it doesn't always happen on the 91st day, but pretty close to that 91st day, we would then take the information that we pulled together um, and submit it to the Siting Council to commence their review process. Um, what you see in the technical report is, is very much pared down from what ultimately gets submitted to the Siting Council. Um, their application process takes about six months. Uh, they have 180 days by statute to make a decision. They can ask for additional time if they need it. But typically that process lasts pretty much all of those six months uh, from the date we file the application. Um, Siting Council is required to hold a public hearing. Uh, since the pandemic, they've been holding those public hearings virtually uh, via Zoom. Um, the, process, the process requires uh, a public uh, evidentiary session, which is typically held in the afternoon between 2 and 5, 5.30, and then an evening uh, public session where members of the public uh, can sign up and speak to the Siting Council uh, as a part of that process. Uh, depending upon the application, the complexities involved in the application, there may be subsequent evidentiary hearings. Um, if you don't... Well, I, I just want to know, first of all, I mean, we have a problem. Ray started off to this was very transparent. I think almost everybody in this room found out about a week ago. Mm -hmm. Now, his counsel is here. We would have had our attorney here. So, number one, can we request to have a meeting at the high school instead of by Zoom. I'm old and stupid. Sure. I don't even have a computer. For sure. And I want to be part of it. Absolutely. So definitely. we don't want we don't want a Zoom. No. And we were told that there was going to be another meeting in November that was the public hearing where people vote yes or no. This is not the let case. Me, let me let me talk a little bit more about the process. So we can we can certainly address those issues. Folks, I promise you, we will, we will get to all your questions, um, but let, let us try and give you some information because I think it may answer some, or if not all of your questions tonight. So um, again, from a scheduling perspective, if, if we file 90 days or 91 days after August 15th, that puts us into the middle of November. The Siting Council, after submitting the application, the Siting Council does a completeness review. Um, within a month or six weeks or so, then, then establish a schedule, which will include a public hearing, which will include a full schedule when they issue interrogatories. They will ask for additional information after we submit our application package and it's deemed complete um, to try and get more information about the proposal um, before it is brought to the public as, as part of this public forum. Um, Again, that process, uh, after the completeness review, interrogatories, the hearing is generally you know, four months afterwards. So we're looking at a hearing sometime after the first of the year, maybe January, February time frame. Uh, after that, there's generally a six week period when the Siting Council will deliberate on the proposal, review all the evidence, be presented with certain findings of fact, and ultimately make a decision. Um, best case scenario is you're looking April or May next year is before this hearing on Zoom? I'm going to get to that. I promise. April or May. April or May, we will, we will, is when the Siting Council will probably make a decision on this application, assuming they didn't ask for additional time. Um, they can ask for an additional 180 days, another six months, if they want to. Um, again, since the pandemic, the Siting Council has been holding all of its public meetings and hearings via Zoom. <coughs> that's not my call, that's theirs. So understand. Whose call is it? Whose call is it? Yeah. Whose call is it? You can't have a meeting like this Who's without people yeah. in front of other people. I, I understand. And, and you can make. Whose call is it? The Siting Council is a state agency. They have an executive director. Who, so we can write to them. You certainly can. As elderly citizens. You certainly who can. cannot function on Zoom and say we want a public hearing. We deserve a public hearing. You certainly can. You certainly can. I'm just telling you that since the pandemic, they have That's not cool. held. The pandemic is over. I'm, 
I'm and just telling you, mask. I'm just telling you that since the pandemic, they have been holding their hearings via Zoom. So let's talk. Let, let's. Sir, let's out of curiosity, so just that, wondering, when did the Connecticut Siting Council have the authority for these matters? Was it relinquished from the towns within the past few years, or has it been the case forever? 1973. Well, 1973, they were established. They got jurisdiction over cell towers in 1986. So it's been a long time. Um, let, let's talk a little bit about the siting council process. There's about how many people in the siting council? They're, they are supposed to have nine members. I think currently they have seven, seven members. Or eight. Yeah. Right. So um, what does the siting council do as far as a review of these applications? The siting council, again, by statute, has to, has to evaluate the need for this facility and then balance that need against the environmental effects of the facility. The, uh, the chief piece of evidence that Verizon typically provides to the Siting Council um, as to, to justify the need for a facility is a coverage plot that looks something like this. And these are in the technical report that we submitted to the town. So what this shows is the area around the proposed facility. This is the, the site designated North Haven Southeast by Verizon. It also shows a number of existing sites around the facility and the coverage that Verizon currently has from those facilities today. So what you see on a map are two different colors, three different colors if you include the white. White is an area of no service today. Green constitutes a signal strength of negative 95 dBm, what they justify as in-vehicle service. It's reliable to some extent, um, but, but not as reliable as the, the stronger signal strength in blue which is negative 85 dBm RSRP, which is what they shoot for in all of their network designs. So what you see here are coverage from the existing sites. You see the proposed North Haven Southeast location, and you see area, uh, I, I would direct you to this area where there is, there are large areas of no service and large areas of marginal service shown in the green. <coughs> Again, the goal is to try and get as much blue into that area as possible. So, so 70 or 80 percent has pretty damn good service, or maybe even 90 percent with the green and blue, and there's almost none that doesn't have any service? Like Let me, 4 percent? The white? Almost the, nothing? The areas, the areas that they're trying that to prove, matter. the areas that they're trying to prove are the white areas and the, and the green areas. So what, the, what the, then we do, is they take this plot and they superimpose on it coverage that they would anticipate to get from antennas, again, at the 145-foot level on the proposed tower. And as you, as you look in that area, you can see how now all of those areas of green and white disappear, large areas of blue at the stronger signal strength. Again, this is at 700 megahertz frequency. These are Verizon's base frequencies. These are the frequencies that they base all of their planning on as they go through their network design. So quick question. You're using 5G towers, correct? There's 5G technology that is, is deployed at these facilities, yes. All the other towers that are surrounding it, when was the last time they were upgraded? Uh, they're in the process of being upgraded now. I've got a 5G so plot so that I'll show you. So process. Before doing something additional? Those, well, you'll, you'll see in a second. The, the reason why we start with the base coverage is because the 700 <coughs> megahertz frequency uh, propagates at the largest footprint. What's the, uh, what's the radius of the coverage of the new tower? It, it depends on topography. It's generally a mile, mile and a half from the proposed facility. So let's go through a couple other plots. This tower is, is what? A mile, mile and a half? The coverage footprint, depending upon topography, is a mile to a mile and a so half. So nine and a half or three quarters, mile, mile right. and a half. And how many people are in that topography of a mile, I, mile and a half? I don't know. I don't know. Well, uh, I think we should know since this is a life. neighborhood yeah. and where you're placing the tower right. is inappropriate and reprehensible. Okay. So why do we have to know yes, about this when we're really like talking right. about the placement in a residential neighborhood? Mm -hmm. This what, is what the issue it's is. Only a certain amount of what I'm, what I'm, right. what I'm trying to just tell you about is what the Siding Council uses as its criteria. We're going to get to the environmental effects issue, I promise. So this is 850 megahertz. Um, not on all the existing surrounding sites, but that's in the process of being upgraded. And then this is a plot that shows what the new site does at 850 megahertz. Again, filling in a large area uh, to the south, to the southwest, and to the northwest 
of the proposed tower site. Um, 3,600 megahertz, this is, this, these are uh, used for their 5G technologies. Again, fewer sites around the site because that, that network is, that 5G network is just being developed as we speak. Uh, will likely be on some of these surrounding sites in the very near future. And then as 5G goes in for the proposed site, you can see the coverage footprint associated with that facility. So again, these, these help Verizon demonstrate the need for the facility uh, based on existing service in the area and what this proposed site will provide them with. So to be clear, so, we're not putting 5G on this tower right now. Yes, right. there's, there's a, there would be a plan to put 5G on this yes. tower from the start, yes. So then, so again, this is the needed side of the balance, right? On the environmental effects side, um, the Siting Council reviews a lot of information that, uh, that Ray's company and the, and the consultant team will be pulling together. Uh, they look at endangered species, wildlife, potential wildlife impacts, uh, U.S. US Fish and Wildlife criteria that have been developed. They, uh, they have to review the Natural Diversity Database in the state of Connecticut, which talks about state um, threatened species. Um, they look at environmental uh, effects like wetlands and water courses, vernal pools. They determine whether there's a, a, an old, uh, adverse impact on farmland soils. We look at the FAA. Did you look at where it's going then? We look, it's going near farmland. I'm getting there, I promise. Okay. They look at the FAA requirements regarding lighting and marking, if that's an issue. Uh, we have to evaluate the radio frequency emissions from the proposed facility to make sure that we comply with the FCC standards that have been established. Um, but the reality is this is a very small facility compound. Um, it's probably smaller than a lot of the homes in the area have to develop and disturb on the ground. So there aren't a lot of actual physical environmental effects. But the biggest one that the Siting Council will look at, and we spend a lot of time reviewing, are visual effects, because that's what's going to have a, a sig more significant impact, or what this, how far away from this site are people going to be able to see it. Now, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, but one of the, the issues that we've addressed through the submission of this map in the technical report um, is, a, is a, very, uh, a very preliminary visual impact assessment map, and what it shows is, again, the tower site in the middle, and then these areas designated in blue, uh, are portions around the facility where the top portion of the tower may be visible uh, from various locations, all dependent upon topography, tree cover, building locations. Uh, but this is a preliminary look uh, to see where there might be visibility of the proposed tower. Sure this information. When was, the last time, when was the last time this map was updated? Because if you look at it now, you'll see a lot more houses. <laughs> yeah, actually, my home's not even on that. I'm the closest to it, and um, it's still in the possession of the applicant, according to that, because I, I, I do have that at home. I mean, if That's you go to the you don't see this at all. Yeah, I see it from different the, um, the, the, the date of the base map, we can investigate that, but this is a, the base aerial photograph that they use for these purposes. But we can, we can find out. Now, with the right visual presentation, that was uh, something that was right. five years ago. And why is it just the visual everybody's concerned about, and not the emittance of the radioactive waves that go 0 0.3 tenths of a mile out there, okay, affecting the health of people and the health of our children? Why is it just the visual we're concerned about? Why are we not concerned about the health issues? We Lee, I'll answer it because the study, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. But I believe the study to which you refer regarding the health benefits, uh, health consequences, please correct me if I'm wrong. Is it from 1996? 26 years ago? Yeah. The, the FCC standard. I don't care about the FCC standard. No, no, you have I to care about the FCC standard. I'm just wondering, is it from 1996? And what about the issues coming from other countries who have evidence-based research of how it is affecting the population. Does anybody look at evidence base or are you just looking at studies that can be altered right. by well, conflict of interest? Done the studies in Why don't we look at they, they have done the Germany? They have done the Why don't we look at those studies the and see what they have to say the about the health issues? Not true. Let, Not let, me, let, me, FCC. let me answer the first question. Oh, go ahead. The, the FCC standard that you're talking about was established in 1996. Yes. Based on information available at that time. Yeah. Since 1996, the FCC 
regularly reviews additional studies, additional evidence, additional information presented by government and non-government agencies that all make recommendations on whether that standard should change or not. So to say that it's based on a study from 1996 is not accurate. Why, it's is, based that, why is that date on the information you because, provide? Because the 1996 Telecommunications Act is the act that established the so FCC and the standard. Let me look. The values since 1996. They don't want to change the bad thing. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't hear you. You're saying that there's been nothing added of value to those studies since 1996. Otherwise, the FCC would have made some changes based on those recommendations. I'm saying that. So we're to believe that nothing of, there's been no advancement in that area as far as. No, what I'm saying is that, that the FCC, upon review of these additional studies and this additional evidence, found no reason to change the standard. What studies are they looking at? They said there's no value of anything. Well, I don't, uh, I don't know that they'd say there's no value. They've, they've it's not enough for them to give. Not enough for them to change the standard. Right? Except there are studies all over from other countries right. that have looked at it, changed the standards because of evidence base, because of doctors reporting what they see has changed in their environment, the children that are coming in. Okay? Right. Those are the studies you have to look at, not just the FCC in America. We no, that's not true. We, we have to look at the FCC standards. And you have to look at the world studies. They have to look at the world studies. They have to look at the world studies. So if, if, your argument, if your argument is that the FCC standard is not the correct standard, mm -hmm. then your fight is not with us or with the, or the State of Connecticut Siting Council. Your, argue, your, your fight is with the FCC. And that, that battle rages from time mm -hmm. to time. You've probably read about those reports as well. But all I'm saying to you is, is that as of today, the FCC, FCC standard is what it is. And we have to comply with that standard. And let, me, and let me just say this too. The, the, the calculations that come from facilities like this, antennas 145 feet in the air, um, which assume a lot of worst case assumptions, right? We assume for the basis of calculating uh, an estimated exposure level from these types of facilities, we assume that the antennas are pointed directly at the ground at the base of a, the facility, and someone is exposed to the maximum transmission. Think of your children with the No one thinks that. that. You're no assuming one that. Assuming. Of course but not. We know there's a risk. But we, That's but we are. Saying. Would you all put I'm it saying in your is, backyard? All I'm saying is, <laughs> would you? Is that no. all I'm saying? That's all we want to know. All I'm saying is, is that when we do these calculations based on the FCC standard, um, these facilities fall well below, 20 times below, what the FCC allows. Uh, from these facilities for Again, so when you do your calculations, you look at this map right there, instead of the latest map that shows a whole neighborhood that's being fully developed with 100 plus. No, this, this map, uh, the aerial so photographs. That's when you do your calculations doing, using that. No, before. no, the calculations are based solely on <laughs> antenna height, transmission power, number of antennas, all number of the. Number of houses are surrounding how many. No, because. It, that's it, nothing it's, to do, that doesn't go into data. No, because the, the, the emission level is based on a, on a point at the base of the tower. Everything else is further from the antennas, right? So as you get further away from the transmission source, those, those percentages decrease rapidly. So at, at, the, at the base of the tower, assuming all those worst case transmission levels, right? Um, full power, the 24, let me just finish, please. I promise I'll get to you, I promise. But just let me finish what I'm saying. The, the, Worst case scenario, all antennas transmitting at full power um, all the time, which doesn't happen, but we assume for the purpose of these calculations. And when you do those calculations, we come up with a level of 5.2% of the FCC standard. We're allowed to transmit up to 100% of the standard and still be in compliance, but this, this facility at 145 feet above the ground is at 5.2%. Again, 20 times below what the FCC allows us. Now, that doesn't address the issue of whether that standard is right. Maybe it's not, but that's not up to us. We've got to comply with whatever standard is in place at the moment. If the FCC decides to adopt a new standard five years from now, ten years from now, all of these facilities will need to comply. And if we can't comply, if we don't comply, well, that might be too late these, for all of us. these and our facilities can't operate. So if 20 years Would you be able to give us data on who, what other antennas out there in Connecticut that are as close to 
other neighborhoods as this is planned to be looked into. Can I just say something? So RF data? Uh, I mean, like other antennas out there. There's an app online. There is. Yeah, there's there's a lot of information on the Connecticut Siding Council's website and the location of other facilities so, okay. around the state. So 20 years from now, they find out a study that it does cause cancer and people get sick, kind of like asbestos and lead and all those things. Who's responsible? Are you responsible? Is the Siding Council responsible? Who, who, who ultimately is going to be responsible if 20 years from now, people wake up and say, shit, this is as bad as asbestos, this is as bad as lead, so what did we do? What goes on? Right. Who's responsible? I, I, I don't know an answer. I don't have an answer. Well, that's can, not you find, that. can you find out for us? Well, you know, you had 22 other sites that you looked at. Why this site? Because right he doesn't this. live there. Yeah, you don't live there, so you don't understand. What we are feeling right now. doesn't have a house there. Other sites. That's why he said yes. And we blame the home, the owners of the land. They're the ones that yeah. said it. Yeah. Is that your point? You want to talk about some of the alternative sites? Well, again, I, th I think what you're trying to convince us of the positive. I'm not. We're not. We are not. I'm trying to provide I, you not, with information. I'm not, I'm not speaking for everyone here, but I'm going to tell you, we're for we're for having a tower and helping people. We told you, no, no one here is against that. What we're against is why in this one spot next to a farm, next to people like I built my house there. I worked my whole life. The sacrifice to where I am to Along build a house. Many, um, and, and, well, everyone else. and children getting off the school Correct. bus right across the So street we can have a private area that's a not rural that's nature, not touched by that kind of stuff. Why are we picking this specific site just because one guy said yes? Why is that the place when there were so many other areas that it could have gone? You had twenty two other sites. What happened to them? Again, these Rick, Rick can talk to some of the alternative sites that he looked at, but, but understand, in order to provide the service to an area where there's a need, you need to have a facility near that area. I still don't and, understand and the need part of it, though. I mean, it's a want. And you said the balance of need and environmental factors. Well, yep. So there are so, environmental so the factors want. in play here. So the, the want here is you've got a small section with not that many homes that you're trying to do this to that is not going to be that impactful to whatever tower you're building. There's other structures you can physically put up that are not as invasive, that are going to be more beneficial, like microcell. You can put them on top of telephone poles, you can put them somewhere else where they're not as visible, they're not going to damage the environment. Why aren't those options, you know, why are we going to the extreme? Why are we going overkill to put this huge tower in when you don't physically need it? Just because someone said yes. Right. Why? I, well, I would I would submit to you that there is a need, um, and I think these maps. We all live there, so we know what the service is like there. We all we know what the need is. Do you know how close the elementary school is to the site? It's definitely less than a mile, okay. and a nursery school. And let's look at the risk benefits. Whenever we evaluate anything, you look at the risks and you look at the benefits. What's the risk, okay, of this? I'll leave it in. What's the benefit? You're risking our children. You're risking the population. Look at risk benefit. Find another spot. You have 22 others. Find another one. Can I ask you a question? Sure. If this guy changes his mind, what other site would you go to? Have you guys tried Walt Saint Cemetery? There's a lot of land over here. Oh, yeah, there's nobody there. <laughs> Would you guys like this church? Residents will not be that mean. Yeah, there won't be any they won't be allowed. There. Well, you want to you want to talk about the yeah. lease arrangement and then the alternative the lease arrangement, and the alternative sites. Uh, Mr. Baldwin, actually, I do have a technical question. I just think emotional. I just I just want to answer the question before we, before before we move on to the next one. If that's okay. Person changes his mind. He has to pay the bills. What other site would you go to? Yeah. That those would have to. Let him answer. 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 If if, if, the, if for some reason the property owner um, doesn't want the tower site anywhere, he's got he's got, he's got a contract now. Okay, but let's say that that site for some reason goes away. He changes his mind. It would need to be more than that, but let's say it just goes away for a second. We would go back and evaluate the other sites. We would have to go back to Verizon and have them evaluate the other sites to see what, uh, whether those sites would work for them uh, or not. We would have to go back to the other property owners to determine whether they're interested in leasing space because we don't have the ability to just take land. We're not a, a public utility. We don't have the right to eminent domain. 
So we'd have, to, we'd have to do another evaluation to see which sites are viable. And then we'd have to take them back to Verizon and ask Verizon, okay, if this is the option, how tall a structure do we need in order to satisfy your need in that area? So it would, it would be another iterative process with both Verizon and the individual property owners working with Ray's team at Homeland Tower. So he already has a contract. He does. Even though this is... Can I ask a question? Correct. Let me My son and daughter-in-law are closest. They are Ravello Farm, which is on the mountains. Which isn't on the map, by the way. Not that map. No, not that map. The closest to the pro to no, where this is happening. Let me tell you. I don't know when these letters went out, but they are their property line is 35 feet away. They did not get a letter. I want to know why. Well, my son is too good. My my daughter and I uh, we're, we're sick over this. My son hasn't slept in days. We've had it. And the, the sad thing is, my best friend is is the owner. His wife, not. Both of them. It, it, it's just a horrible situation, and I want to know why they did not get a letter. These kids have worked. They've been married 16 years. They have worked day and night. My son is working three jobs. My daughter-in-law used to work two. This is their dream home. It's in a residential area. This young couple over here built this beautiful colonial last year. Their dream home. Three little children. My son and daughter-in-law have three little children. Why can't this be in a non-residential area? This is my my way with all this. Okay, so good. And again, I don't mean to, to go back to the, on you. To it's both? just okay. not fair. All these people work very hard, and this is what's come down to. And the the, the siting council requirements for notice uh, for this proceeding and for the the subsequent notice requirements, which are required prior to us filing an application, we've got to provide notice to a budding direct abutting property owner. Um, he owns most of the property around it. Yes. What's what's yes. the address? Eighty one half mile. mile and no letter was no mother, only one letter from was sent. zero. How many people here got a letter actually? You got a letter. Got yeah. I got We're eighty four. We didn't get a letter. We did not get one. Yeah. A bunch of people didn't get letters. There are what is the minimum distance required for a dwelling to a tower? There is no minimum distance. There isn't? No. In your living room, I Sir, thank you, but sir. Hold on, I'll, 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 Rich, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I've, I've done some research, and, it's, and I found out that they, the required minimum distance from a, a dwelling to a tower is a quarter of a mile. That's true. And there are dozens of homes within a quarter of a mile of your proposed tower. I'm, I'm not and sure. I did not receive a letter. I live .3 from that tower and my neighbors are closer than I am. I had no notice, someone came to me and said, you should go to this meeting. Well, so I didn't receive any notice on it. You would think everybody on the block would receive notice. It seems like someone's trying to push this through for a minimum amount of information to those who will be affected the most in this neighborhood. As the attorney for both parties, are you the responsible party for getting that result? I am. And we've, we've, we've sent the notice out based on the town's GIS records uh, to a budding landowner. Are you also responsible for those, those standards Here as far as distance from the home to the tower? There, there is no required distance from a tower for notice. There is no required setback from a tower um, uh, under the Siding Council's regulations. So I'm not sure what quarter mile you're talking about, um, but there are no regulations at the state level um, that require either notification within a certain distance other than a budding property owner's um, Can or you setback. You, as the responsible party, give notice to the to your money property? Yes. I've got a certification of mailing. Aside from the one that lives 35 feet away. Yeah. I mean, and in the packet that you did provide me, because I am one of the property owners, you, you included a municipality notification map with a circle and a radius right. and all these blue dots. These people were not contacted. That's That, that 2,500 foot radius that's included on that map uh, is addressing another siting council requirement. If we are within 2,500 feet of an adjacent municipality, we have to notify those adjacent municipalities. So that's what that notification range shows. But what about the property owners 35 feet from this? I, they have a small farm. They use organic. Nothing. Everything organic. You have copies of the certifications? I don't. I don't believe um, Rich and Alley's property physically abuts the subject parcel. There's there's a second driveway. Excuse me. I'm trying to explain the, the layout of the property. So there's, there's a second driveway that runs parallel that's owned by our current landlord. 
uh, which goes to another property and further back. So I don't believe anyone I that out by road more land physically, around, but I still think us. we should have been notified as we are literally distance-wise the closest. We notice physical butters that touch the property. Those are the requirements. So unless that neighbor had gone around so passionately to yeah, convey no, the message, be here. we wouldn't know anything we about this. We wouldn't know this. anything about this. If that neighbor hadn't done her due diligence because she's so passionate about a neighborhood she's grown up in her whole life. We love it just as much. We've only, now it's been what, three, what, a year. year and a half in the home, three years that we started the building process. And this kind woman came to our home, showed us this letter. If she hadn't done that, we wouldn't have known, friends wouldn't have known, the people you see here wouldn't have known. So you're telling me that this could have just gone through, if she had just said, oh, let me put this to the side, we would have found out when it was in construction. Oh, oh but she didn't. I was walking, taking a walk to Ravella Farm. She came up to me and said, what is this? I said, what? She said, I just got this in the mail. The only person who got, what is this? I said, I'll find out. And I went to town hall the next day, Monday morning, and I got all the information. I'm a medical person, I have done research. And I know how research is done. And guess what? I researched all of this, and I've researched health issues coming from other countries. And we I are very grateful for the passionate and benefits. I've researched evidence base. The doctors come in and say, we've noticed all these kids coming in with all these problems. What's going on? Well, they just happen to be in a community where there's a cell tower. Is anybody looking at that? And when I saw three little children getting off the bus, they might have been your children, right you across the street from this facility, yes. I said, this is wrong. And I got everybody, all these people going. There are young, you. very young children in this community. And they're, they're, they're getting children. off the school bus. And I said, look what we're doing to our children. What are we doing to our children? This ain't North Haven. This is Monterey. Those notifications <laughs> supposed to be done uh, via certified mail? There was no notification. Certificate of mailing. <coughs> there was it's not. It supposed to be done via certified mail? Certificate of mailing. Yeah, it just, it wasn't it's a, certified. There was it's not. a certificate of mailing. We, you simply have to provide evidence that the mailings were sent. No. There was none. I was the first so that found the first mailing. I it's not, least, technically speaking, it's not the green. It's not the green cards. It's a certificate of mailing. Who gives you the certificate of mailing? We fill out the form, and the post office stamps that it was that they've received each of those notice letters before they go out. We never got that notification, and we were point three tenths of a mile from that site where you want to put the. You're not, the, you're not the butter because it's. I'm three hundred feet. Let me let me go here next. Sir, I'm going to keep it a secret. Technical question. You mentioned before that if you wanted to, I might have misunderstood this. Operate the antenna at 100 percent, that would be compliant, and you're only operating at 5.2 percent. That's what the, the the maximum permissible exposure levels are from the Verizon facility. Okay, so and maybe this is not what. For this, what I'm speaking about. Other existing towers in the area, could they simply be turned on? Amplified? Amplified? Upgraded. upgraded. No, 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 not upgraded. Are they only running at a, a small percentage of what they could broadcast? They, they are, surrounding sites are optimized. They call it optimi optimization. Yeah. They optimize those sites all the time. Mm -hmm. But there's only so much adjacent sites can do. Um, topography limits, the, the extent that they can provide coverage. Um, uh, so running ovations. out the capacity, instead right. of building something new, it's, it's not an option to just turn up existing towers. Yes, that's right. But those those options, those optimi optimi optimization, optimization options have already been accomplished. Yeah. The way I look at the network is when I think of the mesh network in my home, right? So instead of adding a third router, <laughs> How about you add extender from both towers that will extend and cover the rest of the area? You, you still need a structure in the area where there's where there's a need. Yeah, yeah but not a 150 feet tall structure. Microcell. Not in a neighborhood. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You can do microcells. That will extend what you need. The rural. Um, residential then that's a that's a pretty common question the siting council asks us to 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 build a, a microcell or a small cell network that has this coverage footprint of what is probably six and a half 
square miles. Right. Um, you're talking about literally hundreds of microcell facilities, assuming the infrastructure exists in the area. And then you're only providing coverage to the streets. You're not providing coverage f very far off the streets because that's where most of the utility poles run. So it, it's talked about a lot as a, as a solution, as an alternative, but it really isn't a viable alternative. And then you've got a bunch of these small sites that are constantly handing off signal from people who might be traveling down that road, but again, doesn't provide service far off the road. So there are a lot of reasons why. Are we why, why are we so worried off the road? Like, I'm, I'm confused on why we're worried off the road. Hold on. I, I, well, I think because... So if you're at home, right? Mm -hmm. You have internet. Most people have internet, correct? Right. Internet usually... You know, it can. It you can do Wi-Fi calling, correct? Right, you can. So that, that is the strongest, most reliable thing, using your home internet to do a call, because that's what I do. You know, mm -hmm. I have Xfinity, right, which is yeah. off Verizon Tower. Yep. And I live on that road. And I get perfect service. Yeah. But when I get home, yeah, I may lose it a little bit, but guess what? It picks up on my Wi-Fi calling right. in my house. And I can make all the calls, I can watch whatever I want on my phone, and there's no emergency that I, that I can't get out to somebody and do what I need to do. So there really, to me, there isn't a need. I think it's a, a lack of education on the people that want it, that don't know how to use whatever technology they have. So well, I you go to the extreme of, I need a tower. You're right. In, in the home, there, there are options, there are alternatives. Right. Same, same in my house. I have bad coverage outside my house, so if I go outside of my house and can't get my Wi-Fi to pick up my cell phone, I've got no service outside of my house. Um, so that it's an effort to try and accommodate those needs outside the home, as well as people traveling up and down the roads, as, as well as other, you know, more remote areas where, God forbid, someone, you know, is involved in a car accident and needs to be able to provide that level of service to, to call the second time you said, so, saves lives? What did you say, sir? What do you mean by saves lives? How does that, you used that buzzword a couple of times. Sure. What does that mean? It's critical infrastructure. Anybody first, died? Responders, first, anybody responders, died? first responders, first responders, first responders rely on the technology. Lack of response? I'm sorry? Has anybody passed away from a lack of response, from a lack of... Ever? The guys don't have no, in this area. We're talking about what's going to save lives over here. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I, don't know what's happen in the I just know that first responders, fire, police, and ambulance, and ambulance to rely on this technology. There's a 0% chance of risk, and you're, you, now you're asking us to factor in... Well, I can only state that, that our critical children. infrastructure and the first responders rely on it. As I mentioned, I gave that example of an ambulance trying to send an EKG yeah, to yeah, Yale. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's, <coughs> it's, it's, it's a little rough. It's, it's only going to help a mile and a half, though, is what you said. So I don't know exactly. if you're going to... What the need is in a, a mile and a half. That's not really an extreme need. I can understand it in, in a... In there's a eight, there's densely eight, populated area. There's 8,000 vehicles a day that travel. Excuse me. There's 8,000 vehicles a day that travel 17 Middletown Avenue. Um, that area is part of the coverage need as well. It's not just the area down by Half Mile Road. It's the surrounding roads. Does so this tower only exclusive to Verizon, or do other providers have access to it? We build all of our towers towers to be cold cable. So this would be able to accommodate AT&T, T-Mobile. Dish Wireless is a new company that's come in the past few years into the Connecticut market, uh, as well as public safety. They can place their equipment on the tower. So, so you mentioned 17. A lot of people travel on 17. So then why isn't the church a viable option? I mean, that's on 17. That makes the most logical sense based on what you're telling us. Not near a farm in the, in the middle of... Cemetery's on 17. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Everyone will have an opinion on where it should be. Obviously, I know there's a school by the church, there's the nursery school, I believe. Yeah, People have an opinion about that. Um, there's a, an opinion it shouldn't be next to a farm. It's an opinion it shouldn't be in a residential area. We're just here to try to fill the need, in the sense. Every time you We're folks live there, no one at the cemetery is going to argue. No one at the cemetery is going to argue that that's going to hurt the environment, the property value. Every time there's a call in place and it's failed or it's dropped, well, uh, Verizon gets that a report of that. What is that's why they know there's a need here. What are your statistics on that? What are the statistics? Talk statistics. What are they? I asked a couple of times. What, what are the what are the wattages, the outputs on any of those? The town microwaves. What do you you know? What, what are we actually pumping out of that tower for wattages? Um, Verizon's uh, ERP, effective radiated power from the transmitters, um, ba based on frequencies. So um, in watts, excuse me, 
It's uh, uh, for the C band, their the 5G frequencies, it's, it's 34.473, um, 2100 megahertz per channel. And how many channels? Uh, sorry, I trouble. Number of transmitters, um, there are a total of 18 in all the frequencies. And that, that would be times four, correct? If there's four carriers? Yes, it, assuming that assuming they would have the same transmitters. It's not always the case. AT&T and Verizon tend to install things that are similar. Um, T-Mobile uh, has fewer frequencies to deploy at the facility. Yeah. Is it a one given? Topic no one's talked about is sound. What kind of sound does he miss from the complex? The audio sound. The only the only sound emanating um, are from the fans that might cool the equipment. Um, and there's a single equipment cabinet, so there's a cooling fan associated with that equipment cabinet. And the generator. Um, and the generator when it's when it's operating. The generator only operates. The generator only operates when commercial uh, power to the facility is interrupted for some reason. But it comes on periodically to do a self to, to test, theory. right? Then it goes yeah. off about 20 minutes. Fire away. Yeah. Concerned about health of, health effects related to to cell towers. And again, I, I, I will I will go back to. The response that we need to comply with what the government has decided is a safe standard. Okay, we mentioned that no health means nothing. Aesthetics we mentioned. What about land value? Siting council by very simple. If somebody in this room simply would not want to live near, if they were a prospective buyer, correct? Correct. If they would not want to live near this, like my next home, I will not choose to live near a zone house. Okay. Then it automatically devalues the home. Yeah. Now let's pretend it's a million dollar property. What are we talking? 10%? 20? And if it's 20, who should be taking the brunt of $200,000 when somebody else is making a lot of money from this? Huh? And who, and when we, if you can sue, who do you go after for this? Or is it, again? We can't go visit Mr. Vergati in Northford. We can't come visit you in Hartford at your office. I'm not going to go walk off to the street to the man I was very close with for 37 years. And I'm only 43 years old, so. Who, who do you go and see? Property values is not one of the criteria that the site I'm wondering what the hell. I'm wondering what, 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 does, what does anything mean here? It's not health. It's not property values. Aesthetics of a rural neighborhood. Because of the applicant's family, they have kept that the most beautiful spot in our town. Right? It is the most beautiful spot left in this town. And now you're going to put something from freaking outer space up there? I mean, and what would it cost for you to get out of the contract you already have with this person? You have a contract. Yeah, because he called me the other day and said, Richie, it's out of control. And he was yelling and crying at the same time. And I told you this the other day. And maybe he truly legally cannot end it. And maybe he regrets this. But if there, if there is a fee that can be paid, what can we do to get this out of here? How does is, he is, there a, is there a number, the sir? And again, again, I am taking out my anger on the two of you. Believe me, you've been nothing but cordial to us. And you can understand that. And, and I am sorry that this is happening. And I'm sorry that I'm making an outburst. No. In, front of my, no. in front of my three kids. But is there, a, is there a price? Like, is there an actual dollar amount? And I need to tell you, he had a festival on his property last Saturday. The whole town turns out for this. The mayor included. The, the mayor, day we found I mean, out the mayor, the first selected. And everybody and was there. And at three, okay? about it's six o'clock that evening, what? <laughs> about six o'clock that evening, my son decided, okay, anybody that's left up here, we're gonna, he's going to get pizzas. We stayed there. We're having a good time, all the kids. And he gets a phone call or text, excuse me, from his neighbor saying, what's going on with these letters? I mean, it went from a beautiful day for family-oriented fun to this. 
And we have been sick over this. Their vendors. dream home, their, their stage, all their married life is going down the tube because of, of this. Put it somewhere else. So can you ask the question, else. can he break his contract? Is there a thing? No, I, don't, I don't make that decision. I've never, I've never seen it done by Holman Towers. It's something that the I don't get involved with. You have a room full of people who are against No, I can't. I don't, I what, is the, what is the recourse? We'll start a GoFundMe. What is the recourse to, 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 to get this moved or eliminated? Because this is just the beginning. That's this is like the first night the people finding out secondhand, thirdhand, this is going to be in your neighborhood. Okay? And when more word gets out, you'll have even more people against this. What is the recourse? For the people in this neighborhood who do not want this in their neighborhood. The site and council process allows for public participation, allows oh, for so neighbors. Ma'am, please, I'm no, just no, trying no, to answer no, the no, question. No, I'm just no, trying no, to answer no, the no, question. No, 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 the process um, invites public participation, invites members of the public to actually become actively involved in the process. We've had neighbors in, in other proceedings who have hired legal counsel to be involved in the proceeding. So there's an opportunity uh, for everyone in this room, there's an opportunity for the town um, to become a part of that process. And that's the process, uh, absent some extraordinary event where, where the lease is no longer available, um, that's the process where the town or the town's people um, can try to convince the siting council that this is a bad idea. I don't think I heard the answer to whether um, we can find out if there is a fee to break the lease. Did, did he answer that? The lease is a private contract between the property owner and okay, so the property owner can find out. He would have to call himself to find out what the price is to break the contract. The property owner had legal um, legal representation during the process, I assume, and, and can talk to their lawyer about what what they are entitled to do or not through that lease agreement. He may not. Even be able to do that. He may not. I, I, I don't know. Do we need to, do we need to start a start? Um, we don't. We don't do the leases for Homeland Towers, so I don't know exactly what their lease requires. How long is the lease? But as soon as. How long is the lease? Let's try to stick with one question. You want to talk about the term? Yeah. Uh, the I'm not. Our typical lease with a property owner, be it municipal or private, is typically a 55-year lease. Uh, I have to check on the specifics of this one, but you're probably right around 50, 55 years. And how about if there's any new studies that come up in that 55 years? Is the contract get amended? Those, those issues are not addressed in any lease agreement between the property owner and the tower. In this case, added, the tower company. Can it be added as an amendment? It's, no, not, I don't typically see anything to do with RF-related uh, issues so in a, in a contract. So if any regulation, only regula FCC regulation will change the tower at all? No state, no Correct. CT? Correct. If the tower were to sit idle, meaning, say, hypothetically, it was constructed, Verizon installed on the tower, and that tower, uh, Verizon deinstalled for whatever reason, and, and that tower sat idle, meaning no tenants on it, um, the siting council could revoke the certificate and make a request to have it dismantled. Who sits on the, who sits on the siting council? Is it legislators or? They no, they are, the, the statute provides for uh, five members appointed by the governor. Um, two, one, one member is uh, appointed by the president pro tem of the Senate, one member by the House, um, Speaker of the House. And then the, the commissioner of the DEP and the commissioner of the Public Utility Authority have designees that no, sit on the side of the council. You take environmental into effect. Can you elaborate on environmental and what they would be looking for? Again, we, what, what we evaluate are a number of factors that the siting council wants to look at. Um, visibility. We talked about visibility. A more complete visibility analysis would be completed and provided to the siting council as a part of those uh, materials. Um, they look at endangered species, they look at historic district impacts, they look at uh, wetland and watercourse impacts, vernal pools. Um, How about pond? Yeah, what about pond? What about pond? 
Yeah, yeah that would be a water course. That would How far water. would you have to be from a pond? Typically, the siding council likes to see us 100 feet from a How water from course. Wetlands, sir? Physical, yeah, same. Quite a bit of wetlands. Yeah, yeah. same. And they, you know, they're, they're being evaluated. The siding council's standard is generally around, it. there's no regulatory requirement, but they like to see something about 100 feet from a wetland area, and those will be a part of the application materials that we submit. I'll yes. tell you that we just did have a wetland report submitted. Um, it will be provided during the Saturday Council process. Uh, the closest wetland is approximately 115 feet uh, to the west of the subject parcel. Um, the report states there's no impact to any water course or wetland systems. But that report will be submitted with, to the Saturday Council application. And just so you know, we have about a minute or two before this gentleman needs to cut over to a new tape. He only has 55 minutes of runtime, so we'll take a, a hard pause. He can change out the SIM card, and then we can continue this for, he has another 55 minutes of tape. I don't know if I should have told you that, but he's got another 55 minutes of, of tape. Can I just ask a question? 16. 16. That's what they gave me. That's what they gave me. I can fill it with my phone if you want, it'll be a go. If this guy, I want to make sure I understand, if he changes his mind and say tomorrow he calls up, he doesn't want the contract, is, is that possible? Or does he have to pay fee, which I think I, he I, Again, I don't, I don't know what termination rights the property owner has in the contract. Um, we, that would have to be explored. I don't know that he has any termination rights. But if there's already a contract, what, what is everybody getting more upset and sick over this for? Do they even have a chance? We, this, again, this is the fact that we have a contract to lease a portion of the property is step one. We, we, we've got a long way to go here. This is but a part. Suppose that he doesn't want it anymore. Say he changed his mind. I can speak to that. I, Holman Towers did the contract, the ground lease, directly with the property owner. Uh, they would not, at this point, be able to break that contract for a reason you where they... can't break it and say he changed his mind. You don't want him to break it. Correct. That's you don't want him to break it. But how do you have a contract, a contract when this has not been approved? Has there been a time period exhausted? We, 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 have to, we have to establish site control. We have to establish site control before we can go forward with the process. Otherwise, they're, they're, you know, we don't have any, any hard and fast agreement. So that's why. Can you just expand on that, sir? You said you can't break that contract. That's not been true from day one. So was there a, a period of time from the inception of the contract that could be broken that's now passed? No. Once we enter into a lease with the ground owner, we have certain rights as a developer to hold that property while we go through the zoning process. We're making a huge capital investment into that site, be it soft costs, eventually construction costs, just because a landlord wanted to say, well, I changed my mind or had buyer's remorse, it doesn't allow them to simply get out of the contract. So, so when did he sign the contract? You're 100% confident. There's yes. no verbiage in there. Correct. So when did he sign the contract? So, so this was not transparent to that. Lawyers sales, you make a lot of money. This was not transparent at all. You guys say you make a big investment. What about all these kids in the area? Well, what are investments? Like, what are we going to do with these kids? If they get sick, you talk about investment. Yeah. What about this thing? Yeah, sure. no problem. Now you see why there's a hammer on there? Also, what would be the purpose of the public hearing? I just, it, does it, do we even have a chance? I just, we want to know facts. The public hearing. Tell us a little bit more about that. One of these ever been overturned in the public Yes, hearing? Orange oh, yeah. recently, I'm Milford sorry. another one recently. We uh, together, once this yeah, meeting yeah. is over, we'll have a, a little post meeting. Okay? Yeah, then, so so the sure. public hearing is, is simply uh, a mechanism through which members of the public who are not involved in the proceeding can tell the siting council what they think. You can write letters, you can appear, you can, and you can speak the evening of that session. Um, and I'll explain why you don't want the facility, and all of that is taken into consideration by the siting council before they render a decision. Yes, applications have been uh, denied by the siting council before. Um, How many? I, I don't know. What, per what percent? I've been doing this for 30 years, you said? Yeah, I think that the percentage of sites that are denied um, is, is small, only because we've been doing it for so long, we know what the siting council will like and, and doesn't like. Um, so we, doesn't take we, we don't propose. That doesn't take into account the people in the area. It does. It, it does. I, I, I um, suspect it's a 
is, it, is the language correct? Are the, are the, are the things that they require to be in the language, are they all there? Do they check off all the boxes? That's criteria number one for being accepted. They like to say that. that means, you're you're saying that's means nothing. Right? So, I, I, no, I don't very little in, in the grand scheme of things. So to say to people here that you know, there is some chance, you know, it's, it's, it's not right. Well, look, I'm, I'm, I'm here advocating for the I understand you're here. We all understand why so, you're here. So you're doing a good job of representing the company, but the people here are, you know, they're obviously pretty upset about this, mm -hmm. and there's no, there's nothing in that equation of what's acceptable to the society committee that takes into account the feelings of the people. And that should not be. Yeah. So, well, so you mentioned you mentioned need and, and, and the need for this. I don't see anybody in here saying that they want it. No, we don't need. I don't know where the need, don't don't know where the need is because the people that really wanted this, right? Because the want, where are they? They're home. They're home with their kids, doing whatever they want because they're not worried about it. Either. They don't care. Excuse me. Excuse me. Will the people on this siting commission have they actually been to the site, and will they? Um, know what they're talking about. Do, do they even know where North Haven is? No, no. So will they actually come here where we can see them and speak to them like when we have a planning and zoning meeting in North Haven? Those people, they, they got, I don't want to say something, but they have some, they're sitting in front of everybody when they make a decision. Of one homeowner wants to do this and one wants to do that. And they look everybody in the eye and they make their decision. I give them credit for that. Are these people, do they know the site how close it is to houses, and are they going to come? Yes. Or can we meet with them? They don't know yet. We haven't filed an application yet, okay. right? We can't do so that do. until we we can do the end of November. <laughs> no, so look at the map that doesn't show any houses. Yeah. 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 You make an on-site visit. You go out to the area that's going to be affected. <coughs> that's our job to represent ourselves. Exactly. To do that. So and it, to bombard them, hit them up hard, send them pictures. I got a letter back. They were very kind. They emailed me immediately back the next day, and I shared with a few people. I could show it to you. So they do respond. They they really did. They responded right away. They were very honest. They said, "Well, hold your letter." And they gave it a, a docket and, and a uh, acceptance number on it, and then they said, "When it be, when we get in it, when and if we get an application." I would be informed. So we need to do our due diligence and just kind of, you know, beat yeah, everybody up. Together. We gotta, I mean, you know, we, we got to start with our own little town hall, okay? So that, you know, we, we start. I, I'm really concerned about the emergency management thing and not knowing names. So if it's New Haven, it's Rick Fontana. It is Rick Fontana. Very good. Okay, no problem. I have a coffee with him tomorrow night. I'll make sure we have a discussion about it, okay? Excellent. And, you know, and, and see where he sits in on it and what's up with not only microwaves, now we've got cameras, and every time we talk, there's something else being added. Yeah, there's no, no, there's there's no, no microwave land. land. It's only going to affect a mile and a half. Why is New Haven? I have no idea. How's that going to affect New Haven? So, How's the mile and a half going to affect New Haven? So there's things we need to do in order to hammer it home hard to let these people know. We need to send every day letters, emails, phone calls, and then the governor's office. And let's get our, our local representatives who are in Hartford. You know, they say they can't get involved, it's not local, but it, it's now a state level from what these gentlemen are telling us. And Ray, earlier in the conversation, you said that it, it sounds like it, and this is a conflicting story sure. that I'd like to get to the bottom of. I know several people in here have personally talked to First Selectman Mike Frieda. Your story and his are completely different, that he was on board with this and he facilitated it and he likes it and everything no. else. I did not hear that. No. I don't think I've made that representation, uh, representation and I can't certainly talk for Mike okay. Freda. I can speak for the town's public safety has expressed interest. We show them on our drawings. They provided information on their UHF antenna and on the camera for emergency management. Um, I have not asked uh, yeah. Mr. Freda to personally approve this uh, and so forth. I have, have had face-to-face -face meetings with him because in my alternate sites, uh, we approached the town uh, because the town owns seven properties in the area. And, what happened and they were rejected for various reasons, uh, some of them having conservation deeds on them where it would not allow the development of the facility, others being too far away from the search area, basically, on Half Mile Road. Um, that would not work, and they were re reviewed by the engineer and rejected by Verizon. 
So I've had conversations with Mr. Freda. I've spoken to you know Paul, who's the, uh, the the fire chief here in town. I know Rich Fontana has been on the emails. I've corresponded with Utility Communications, which is the town's consultant for first responders uh, to so understand what their needs are. are. So, so I, I think that the first responders have a need so here, but I'm, I can't speak for Mr. I can speak on that. I can speak on that. I'm, I'm a first responder. Unfortunately, I've done work in my neighborhood. Um, I'm a first responder in another town, but I've done work in my neighborhood. My radio worked fine. My cell phone worked fine. It was hours and hours and hours that I was in that area. It was my cell phone the entire time. My radio reached the town that I was working probably 20 miles away. No issues. No issues at all. And public safety has the power to shut off all surrounding towers so that only only that one tower can get hit. So if there's an issue, they have a way to fix it so that they can get there. But the map that you have is wrong. Rich Fontana no longer works in New Haven. He moved to New He works in West Haven now. That's Steve. That's Steve. That's Steve. Steve. Yeah. So there's just a whole bunch of issues that I have with what you're doing is really awful. You're pitting an entire town against each other by putting this in the middle of a residential area. New York Haven has a number of different spots that are not in the middle of a residential area. There's a cemetery right down the street. There's there's a whole mile of buildings that you can put it on top of the building. It's just awful because now the, the, the homeowner that you have, or the, the property owner, owns all of the property in the area, so I think that's why none of us got any, any sort of notification <laughs> because he owns all the surrounding property. And so you're pitting him against the entire town. You got against all of us. Now us against the town, because now we're going to have to go to the mayor, and we're going to have to go to the representative, and we're going to have to get an attorney, and we're going to have to do all of this stuff. It's just awful. Find another location. If you didn't put an application in, go and find another location. Don't put the application in. Tell us right now you won't put the application in, and we'll leave you alone. One of the, one if of the you do, if, you, if you're going to go it's to the number, worse, it's, this, everybody in this room is in this room, like, not because they got a notice in the mail, because they ran, I ran by somebody on the street and they stopped me and said, there's a tower going up over there. And I engaged in a conversation. And this is how many people ended up here. Just by with, word of mouth. Just by word of mouth in two days. One of the, and, and one of the benefits the of this process. I'm away from where this will be, but I am here because these are my friends, these are my neighbors, and this is wrong, and this will affect their home values. And because you there's no limit to how close any person's house it can be in. I guess it's the same. Let me address right now. Let don't me put address that application the last in point. because it's not going to happen. Because these people We're should triple budget. Oh. 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 Because it's not going to happen. Triple, quadruple. People all over the town are going to say no to this. And you don't waste your money. What Tell your company, don't waste outside. your money. It's not going to happen. One of the benefits of one of the, one of the, the targets of this <laughs> process is not only to get information out there about the proposed facility, but to discuss alternative sites. So to your point, sir, um, the town, by statute, has the ability to recommend alternative locations that we have to consider as a part of this process. So, and we've been involved in applications before, I've been involved in applications before, where new locations were developed and presented, which had to be evaluated. And in at least two instances, I can recall, um, those those new locations became the proposed site or became one of the proposed sites presented to the siting council. So that's one of the other issues. So to the extent that, that you all have uh, alternative locations that you want to be considered by Homeland Towers, I would recommend that we get together with, with Mike Frieda and we, we talk about those, so we identify those, and we, um, and we, we no, investigate those as a part of this so process. Have, Let me go to this gentleman here. He's been raising his hand for a while. And we, yeah, a lot has been covered already. I'm sure I live on North Hill Road. But uh, after I was told on Friday what was going on, because we didn't know anything about it, and uh, me and my wife went back into the house, and uh, like everybody in this room, we care about the neighborhood, right? That was the, the dream. I wanted to move out of New Haven, I wanted to move into a neighborhood, and I wanted to be part of the community. So, uh, and we have a really good community on that end of town, um, that end of North Hill. But uh, when we were inside the house and we're thinking, we have to fight for a spot on the windowsill. I understand what the gentleman was saying about the Wi-Fi assist and the, the, the texting and stuff. In order for me to use my phone, we have to put it on the windowsill. I will continue to use that windowsill for the next 50 years not to see this, not to see the emotion in the room. 
I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to shouting. I, be, I don't believe in, in, in the loudest voice never gets the most attention, but the biggest group will. So if we stick together and we continue to contact one another, moving forward, it's not going to change up here in the front. And Ray, I, I got to tell you, um, find another word besides a compound. All right? <laughs> I spent a lot of years living on a compound, and that's not a nice word. If you're going to address the public, and there's a lot of emotion in here, and there's people in here, and there's kids in here, Find a different word than compound. There's all there's very few people that are that are benefiting from this. And one of the other things I would say is uh, the uh, first responders have shown a uh, an interest, not a need, an interest. If you're going to put up a 150 foot tower, sure they're going to throw an antenna up there, sure. but it doesn't affect what they're doing now. I, I'm not a very intelligent person, but. I can, I can tell when I'm looking at someone who really is just here because it's a formality and you want to go through emotions. And when somebody out here that's working on emotion says about a microwave, you shouldn't respond the way you responded. We're not putting microwaves up there. We know that. I mean, I'm smart enough to know that. That's kind of like a slap in the face. And this gentleman here that has the property that's right at the foot of it, I couldn't imagine being in his spot. So, like, my vote is going to be no, it'll always be no, because it's families that get it So I've said my two pieces. And mm -hmm. it's <laughs> to find alternate sites. So I spoke to Mike Frieda before this, and he, he tasked me with reporting back to him tomorrow about where this is, because he does want to mediate and find an alternate site. So I just want to put that out there. He does want to put an alternate site. So if that's really your true intention, that that's what you want to do, then we'll get that to happen. But I want to see if that's really what you want to do. Yeah, but has anybody contacted the Archdiocese of Hartford who owns all that cemetery property and who already has solar panels that they're renting? Has anybody contacted them? I did. They would be happy to put a tower there. I did. Oh, yes. Um, so I ended up uh, speaking to, um, they have a, um, they call it a council. Right. And so I sp spoke to a man named John, and I explained everything that was going on, and he said that they're absolutely interested there you know. <laughs> in, in leasing, <clears throat> you know, having a lease agreement. They have it for the solar, solar, they field. Have a solar farm there. And he said, but what he was told is his understanding is that where they would put it on the cemetery is not going to provide Horizon the coverage to the area that they're looking to cover. So it was eliminated. So I don't know if you guys want to relook at that and see, and see how the map of coverage would change, how much of the coverage is will be taken away if you do put it on the cemetery. I think that as an alternative, you have a very willing landlord, um, and so I think I, w I would like to see, as part of your homework, to see what, what it would look like, because I, I actually had this conversation with them, they're fully okay. willing to do it. Um, I, I want to see, is, is it 25% uh, of the coverage area would not be covered? Is it 50% of the coverage area that would not be covered, and so on? So. It, it, again, as I mentioned earlier, Mary, thank you. Um, any alternative sites that are presented have to be considered. It's not a, a, a desire of Ray to consider alternative sites or not. He's already looked at 22. Um, if the town presents us with additional alternatives, we have to, by statute, take a look at those alternatives. And they'll be evaluated, um, not only from of whether the, the it, property owner is interested, which is what Ray would undertake, but whether Verizon can make it work, to your point, right? We want to make sure that the site is going to satisfy their objective, or at least satisfy as much of their objective as they can get uh, from a particular location. So that evaluation would have to happen. But we need to know what those alternative sites are that the town would like us to consider so before we can do that. So if we give them my freedom, that would be an option, correct? The, the town can present alternative locations. So, yeah. If they give and you an alternate one and it fits the need, can he break his contract? Can we switch? If, 
if there's an alternate site that's presented to Homeland and Verizon and it checks those four criteria boxes and it's a better site than what we have, we would absolutely pursue it. What if it's okay. equal to? I don't, make, I don't make that decision per se. Who determines but what I'm telling that? you, it's, it's an internal decision that we work with Verizon, we work with our visual consultant, uh, we work with our environmental consultant. Um, we'll certainly look at it. But if it was equal, <laughs> would you say if it's, that? If it's equal, well, meaning equal <coughs> as in aesthetics, environmental impact, equal as in... Well, you said better, so I'm trying it to would, say if it's equal. It would, it would need to be evaluated. Remember that any, any site going forward would have to go through the same evaluation <coughs> criteria that this site has gone through. So we would have to look at it. We'd have to look at the environmental effects. We'd have to look at the visual effects. We'd have to look to make sure that it works from an RF perspective for Verizon. Um, you know, what, what I've experienced and what, you know, you probably understand, we move the tower to a different location, we've got a whole other neighborhood that might have the same concerns that you have. So all of that has to be taken into consideration. All I'm saying now at this point is, as a part of this process, the statute gives the town particular rights to say to Homeland, I want you to look at some alternative sites and here are the ones I want you to look at. They can't just say kind of openly and generically, find an alternative site. They have to say, look at these sites. Here's a town property. Here's a here's a, the Catholic Cemetery Association property. Um, consider those alternatives and we'll do that. Who yes, has the who has the uh, the legal responsibility to <coughs> notify people in my neighborhood that you're looking to construct a cell phone tower down a block from us? So who has that legal responsibility to notify us of that? Because my wife and I got no notification whether regular mail or certified mail. Are you are you an abutting property owner, sir? We just went over that. No. Okay. We're not. All right. But so I'm just that, that's that's yeah, the only reason. That's why you didn't. people for the next meeting. We that's, live point three tenths of a mile okay. from the site. But but the notification requirements are direct to butters. That's that's all I'm explaining is that's why you didn't get a notice letter. Oh, okay. See, so otherwise you keep it a secret. <laughs> I will tell you at the time of the signing council hearing, uh, there will also be a public notice signed, typically four foot by six foot public notice that will be installed at the entrance of the subject property. So there's a sign that goes up at the property. Uh, I believe it also goes into local uh, newspaper as far as the date of the signing council hearings and so forth. You said, you said there's new studies. Not the 26-year-old ones, the FCC rules. Is there a site we can find those on? I would, I would recommend you go to the FCC's website, FCC.gov, and there's a there's a tab for RF safety, and it talks about all the information that the FCC's reviewed over the years um, related to its standard and how it was established. Are they third-party verified? Sorry. Are they third-party verified? I, I think they're verified by the scientific community. Um, but again, that information would be there and something you can take a look at there. And that's a, it's a really good source of information on RF safety, and I would, I would recommend you start there. How much are we talking to break the contract? Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, I don't know. There, 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 there is no way to break the contract. There is, there is no fee okay. that can be paid to break the contract. I think that's what Ray said. If he wanted to change it, he could? No, I don't, I don't believe. I think what Ray said is he, that the property owner doesn't have a right under the lease to terminate the agreement. He doesn't? He does not. But if it wasn't approved? If we, yes, if we cannot receive a government approval from the siding council, we can't hold a lease there for 50 years. The landlord has rights under <coughs> Homeland not receiving governmental approvals, and the lease could be terminated. Well, what I'm saying is, how did you manage to get a contract when this has not been approved? How did that happen? We have what's called an option lease agreement. Very standard out there in the tower world. Before we go through the zoning process through siding council, we are making an investment. We have to have interest in that parcel. Homeland has a lease with Verizon. We're co-applicants. Verizon cannot enter into a lease with Homeland until we have secured a ground lease. So we have an active option lease with the owners. If the site is approved, we will exercise that option and the lease will commence. But we are spending money during this process, visual reports, environmental reports, FAA reports, health studies, 
A&E drawings, site plans, you name it. We're spending thousands and thousands of dollars. We have to have interest and in leasehold and rights to be doing that with this property. So it's very standard in the tower industry. You approach a landlord, you sign a lease, you move forward. What did you want to get a, a hearing saying that a proposal, a proposal for a cell tower is your intention and you plan to purchase such a lot so you could have a public hearing prior to doing a contract? Or was there any kind of notice put out that we're going to purchase this property for the purpose of the cell tower? Yeah, there's there's no purchase agreement. It's a leasehold agreement. We have, a, we have lease rights to that square footage, that 70 by 80. So let's area. say, not purchase, so it was a lease agreement, but there was no notice to that. No, you never. To enter into never. That it's a private contractual a matter between tower. Homeland and any landlord. It's a private contractual matter. So once you sign that lease, um, you really don't consider people in this room because you would have done that ahead of time. You would have got a feedback. You could have brought some feedback back saying that now you have an unbreakable lease. So I still confused it. It seemed like you tried to sneak in, get the lease, and then deal with us in some manner. Absolutely not. No, there's a process, as Attorney Baldwin explained. This public information meeting is the first step. There'll be a public hearing but to it's decide. Too late but it's too late for the the lease was signed. It's too late right, for the but, neighbors to do anything. But that, that's a private contractual agreement between Homeland and the property owner. Just like if you wanted to lease property to somebody for some other purpose, you don't have to notify the neighbors. No, but when you put up a 150-foot cell tower, and now we have a hearing to listen to it, and we know there's no lease agreement that we can break, there's no way he can get out of it, what's the purpose? Well, because I, I think as we discussed, as a part of this siting council process, concerns about the neighbor from the neighborhood, about the facility that are within their authority to judge visibility, um, environmental effects, those types of things. That's the type of thing that typically residents or towns or opposition groups would present to the siting council um, to oppose a facility like this. Yes. Hi, um, Ray, you had mentioned that um, at this time, your company is in the process of spending thousands of dollars. And one of the things you mentioned was health studies. Would we have access to those health studies? Can you elaborate more on that? Yeah, I think uh, Attorney Baldwin mentioned that the uh, Verizon Over Engineer ran numbers already to show where the, the MPE, the maximum permissible exposure levels, would be with this Verizon equipment. Uh, we'll do the updated report since the, that those numbers were run. Uh, the town has expressed interest, as shown on the drawings, to place their equipment on the tower as well. So they'll, we'll update that, that report to include the town's uh, transmission uh, output as well for that. And now this is done by Verizon, not an independent person that has no interest in wanting the tower up, correct? It's Verizon engineer will run the report. And the so not a third party independent. It's a, it's a pretty straightforward calculation that the FCC has established. We plug in the numbers about the number of transmitters, the frequencies, et cetera, uh, and it spits out at the end of that calculation the, the, the number, which is that 5.2%. So, yeah, you can, have, you can have independent folks do the same calculation, but they're going to come up with pretty much the same numbers. And what kind of medical input is put into those you know, findings? Like, are there medical experts taking a look at those numbers, at that data that gets... Yeah, we're, we're talking about everything that happens at the FCC level, right, because they're the ones who've established the standards. So yes, there's a lot of medical evidence, a lot of medical information included in those studies that have been presented to the FCC uh, in order to, to get to the determination as to whether they should or should not change the standard. Um, and that has been presented on a fairly regular basis every, every year, every two years, every three years when there's new data or information to be presented. Um, and again, since 1996, the FCC has determined that there's no need to adjust the standard um, based on that new information. I have a question. Um, you know, I'm going to probably put you on the spot. I don't know if, if Ray, I know he was involved in the process of getting this. Ray, did you see where these stakes are, where this is actually going to be put? I've been to the property a number of times. Um, Have you seen the stakes exactly where this is going to be booked? I don't recall if I've seen the. We've had it since staked out. I don't know if I've seen the exact stakes. I'm not sure. Have you? I have not, no. Okay. If this <coughs> was your property, 
and you're on camera, so what, watch how you answer this. You got to answer to your bosses. Would you have this in your backyard? Would you be sitting here, or would you be standing up there, blah 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 blah? What would you do? With a camera. Answer at the top. seriously. It was right at about 40 feet from your property line. What would you both do? I'm biased. I'm biased. You're so, biased. So yeah, I look. If if you're talking about from an RF safety perspective, I'd have no concern, have no concern. because I've, I've my experience and and the studies I've reviewed and the information I've reviewed from the FCC, I think the standard is appropriate. Um, and you're a facility you're like this, and a, on your I promise, I promise. You're right. You're exactly right. It's based on my my expertise as a person and as a lawyer. But I but I've been studies, doing it for a while. Not, you're not a medical professional. I'm not a medical professional by any sense. But I've but I've reviewed a lot of information over it over the years about RF safety. Um, and yes, I would be comfortable from an RF safety perspective. With this. Look, there there's a there's a chart that I can I can provide to my treaty provided to you. Um, the, the RF emissions levels from facilities like this with antennas 145 feet in the air are lower than the RF you're exposed to in your home from your, from your internet routers and from your wireless phones and from your microwave oven. It, you were going to say something else, sir. Instead of, other than just the RF exposure, it seemed like you were going to say something else. No, I was focusing, focusing on the RS health effects. You wouldn't take anything else into account before in your yard? Like the loss of your property value. You work pretty hard as an attorney. You bill four or five hundred bucks an hour. You want to give that money to somebody else so they can help you? Look, I, Ray, you I understand there's a no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not asking you to. I understand there's a process. Your lawyer answer. Give me a real answer. I don't. I don't have a cell tower in, in my no, so backyard. Both of your I don't either. Your standards for the I don't either. Yeah. Are minimum required by law and ignore other people. That's not true. That's what this process is about. That's what you're about. exhibiting. This process is about Especially making this sure. This is too late for everyone. This process is to make sure that people are not ignored. Well, you said it's 40 right. acres. Why is it right up against the property line now and not set back another two or three acres? Why does it have to be right on the property line, 40 feet? The, um, the subject parcel itself has uh, very steep slopes. Um, you have to be able to get equipment vehicles, uh, construction vehicles, uh, extremely Even a steep. a little bit further in? I mean, how, how much? If the, the slope starts pretty much right 50 feet into the property. That's why it's been located where it's it is. That's possible. Addition, the owner did all the excavation for free. In, in, in addition, in addition. Mike's backyard is very level, and it's only about 600 feet away. In addition, our thoughts were any kind of or anything. Our thoughts were is to use the ridge line as a backdrop. Uh, to potentially soften any views. So having a tower at the lowest portion of the property and having a ridge line that protrudes up behind is a good thing as opposed to putting a tower up on top of the ridge line. It's a, then it, it's more visible. It's a fair question and it's something the siting council would typically ask when they have a parcel that's almost five acres and the location of the tower site. So that'll have to be evaluated as a part of that siting council process. I mentioned earlier that after the application is filed, siting council would issue a, a series of interrogatories that would include requests for additional information. That will likely be one of the questions that we'll have to respond to. Go ahead and let them answer that question, Ms. John. Would you like it? Uh, yeah, it's a hypothetical. I can't stand here and say that. I can't like to inform myself. I'm And we're just finding out about the camera tonight. That makes yeah, it even more of an issue. That's yeah, so that's a pro that brings up privacy issue. For the homeowner's got a pool right next to it. I mean, looking into their yard, basically. We, we, we'll find out a little bit more about what the emergency services were looking for. That's simply just that, that was simply something that was stated to Ray um, that we were conveying uh, as a part of this. So we'll we'll find out a little, little bit more about what exactly they want to put at the top of the tower. So none of the other towers have cameras. This would be the first one. The wireless carriers don't install cameras on their towers. No. Um, this this was this was again this was this was a part of the the town's emergency service network where a camera was mentioned. So let us find out a little bit more to see if it's actually going to happen or what it would be used for. Yeah. 
Again, ultimately the siting council makes the determination. If the siting council is convinced, based on the information that is presented to them, that the facility should not go here, that there, there isn't a real need, or there might be appropriate alternatives that need to be considered, or that the environmental effects are significant. So it has nothing to do with people. It does, because I think what I've heard tonight is that people are going to raise issues related to visibility and health effects and property values. So those are the types of issues that the siting council will hear and consider in their deliberations. Yeah, I have a question. Up there, we're all talking about all this stuff. Uh, stop right there. Do you have any more things to look at? Just the ones we showed in the affirmative presentation. That's it. It's all done? Yeah. So how about environmental impact? No, you don't want to talk about that. Talk that there will be an environmental impact study. Who does that? We have a, we have a consultant team. Um, with uh, experience in the environmental reviews that will be uh, included as a part of the application materials. You sleep well and what, you just go for Have a whole year, spring, summer, summer, winter, fall? Pardon? I mean, when do they do this impact study? Do they go there when the wildflowers are up, or the spotted lizard, or the three-toed toad? If, Broken, you know, when do they go there? What they do is an evaluation when Ray hires them, and they go out there. If there's an issue with you know, amphibians going into a vernal pool nearby. We've dealt with that before. What we will typically do is wait until you get through the breeding period, which is in the early spring, uh, before they complete that report so they can make a clear determination as to whether there'll be an impact or not. I don't think we have those issues here. We're, we're more than 100 feet away from the nearest wetland area, but that's something that would be taken into consideration. I mean, the there same are all thing. kind of wild, protected wildflowers come up there, do you? So you you do. The spring. As, a, as a part of that evaluation from the natural diversity database, you get not only you know um, animal species, but you get plants that come up about about any endangered species in the area, and those would then have to be evaluated as a part of that environmental impact study. It's seventy-five feet from my chickens. Does that take into account chickens? Chickens. We have about a hundred chickens. chickens. It was literally. I saw the post. I, I'm, I live on the property, so I saw your post. It's behind my chickens. Right? Well, generally, the, 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 the wildlife concerns focus on you know endangered or threatened wildlife. Uh, I don't so think chickens exactly are there, but... Well, there's plenty of chickens, plenty of human beings. It might affect my business. People might not want to buy the eggs if they see that. I hope that comes into account. Just, I just have a question as far as... This seems to be basically a commercial structure, and does it get away with being in a rural neighborhood because they claim that it's a public benefit? Is that how they get away with that? Well, there, again, there are no restrictions for cell towers in residential areas. We have cell towers in residential areas all throughout the state of Connecticut. Is it because it's considered public benefit? It, it's because it's a commercial structure? It, well, yes. It's, it's considered a, a public benefit in that it's providing what the state has determined to be valuable service. Whether this is the exact right location for this facility in the area where there's a need is something that the siting council has to evaluate. It's not a public need. I mean, a public benefit because it's a pro profit company. Yeah. Well, there, there is a public benefit, um, but the siting council has to evaluate the benefit, the need, and then, profit company, not a public utility. It's not. It's not a non-profit, non profit right. company. Correct. <clears throat> Does anyone ever look at conflict of interest? In what regard, man? In regard to this, in regard to Verizon, with the conflict of interest when you're looking at evidence. You told me that you look at the FCC health reports. Mm -hmm. Do you look at any other health reports besides the FCC? Do you research no, yourself? No, no, no. We're, we're, not, we're not obligated mm -hmm. to comply with any other standard other than ah, that adopted I by see. the FCC. So it makes no difference what other countries say. It makes no difference, okay, that a letter was sent out. Okay, so it makes no difference what other countries say. 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 It makes no difference what of forecasting and negative health issues that they have found. We're, we're not considered about that. We're not concerned about that. Constant headaches, pressures in the head, dizziness, sleep. Any of your kids having problems with memory or retention? 
or behavior, but because this is what they're finding when you're looking at evidence-based and not scientific. Evidence-based tells you we're seeing something here. We don't understand it. Let's research it. It's coming from other countries. It's come from Egypt. It's come from Israel. It's come from Germany. Other countries. FCC looking at this? Did you look at this? Yep. Did you look at this? No, we're looking at in merit, we're looking at this country where it benefits, <clears throat> talk about conflict of interest, benefits big business, benefits Verizon, benefits his company, which is an LLC. Okay? Let's talk about that. I mean, on Let's that talk note, about health issues. On that note, ma'am, I would no longer feel comfortable living where we do in such close proximity to this tower. I'm speaking on behalf of my husband and myself with our three young children. That's correct. We would no longer feel comfortable staying there. And our property value would plummet. So us trying to sell our home for even a fraction of whatever we put into it, forget it. What would we do then? With three young children, start all over, uproot them, a place they love, friends that they love, a community we love, for business. Yeah, when we, when we sought out to build our home in that area, I originally wanted to go to Madison. My wife said, no, I don't want to take my daughter out of Monowee's public school. We love her. She has all her friends okay. here. We have all our friends here. We want to stay here. And we were blessed that we found mm -hmm. one piece of vacant land that we could still build up. And since we found out about this, and I can speak for others here too, we haven't slept right, cried every night. I look at my children and I know that I will not be able to stay there knowing that that tower will be directly across from us for the rest of their years, upbringing my children in that environment. Absolutely not. And to me, Absolutely. personally, there would be no amount of money that would ever change my mind. So I'm Absolutely. 100% with you. I will my downgrade, downsize, my any of it. Niece and nephew, and all you guys and anybody in that vicinity, it's disgusting. Dis yes. Absolutely Again, right? disgusting. And I literally drove by one today and I started crying and I almost threw up and I said, this is going to be what I look at. It, when I walk outside, when I drive up my driveway, I used to be so excited. I'm like, I can't believe I live here and now I have to look at that. And we don't, I, mean, I asked not, both you know, of you to look me in the eye. I don't know if you're a father or whatever it might be, whether you are or you aren't. I ask you to go home tonight and think about that. Think about that very well tonight when you go home. The sleep that we've lost over this and will continue to lose over this. And I kid you not, if this happens, we are leaving. And this I is a town and community we love with all our hearts. It would break our hearts, but now I regret every day not listening to my husband. When he told us three years ago, we should have, you know, let's go, go look into other towns because there's houses available. And I refused. I refused because that piece of property came up and then we felt like this was meant to be. This is where we're supposed to be. And now this comes into play. How do you think we are all feeling? You have to put some feeling into this too. I know this is business. I know this is what you do. And I know that we're, it's coming off as if we're taking it out on you. And I don't want to do that. But I really need you to think about the feelings in this room. It, it, those feelings have become very, are very clear. So I'm, I don't think I'm we can walk you, away from this. I'm with Sean. I would stick my head out the window to make a phone call if I thought for one second that I would jeopardize anybody's health because that is the most important thing. And without that, what do we have? doesn't matter. We can't take money with us someday. Right. So you know what? I could sleep at night knowing that in my heart I want her, her children to be safe. I love my niece and nephew more than anything. All my family. And it's disgusting. Are you the project manager on this? What? I am. You are. Okay. So it seems our only two options are to either convince the siting committee that they should rule in favor of us, or you have the ability to do that. You said there's 21 other alternative sites. How can they you listen to no. this room tonight and go through with this, knowing so the people that you're hurting? I think, uh, the I think you have the ability to end this. The 22 sites that were looked at, I think they're being uh, misrepresented as viable alternate locations. They're, they're not, not viable. But so they are all, they're, 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 viable they're, alternate they're alternate sites locations. that were reviewed, okay. and in the packet that was submitted to the town, it's got the address, it's got the 
uh, ground location. And basically, it has the reasons why it was rejected, as obviously, uh, as I mentioned earlier, conservation needs didn't work for the RF engineer, lack of landlord interest. Uh, so they're not alternate sites that we can automatically go to. There were sites that were reviewed, and obviously, we settled on the, the subject part. But out of those 20 up one of their sites, is there something, is there somewhere, one of those alternate sites that you can build on? Is there one? Out of all those sites, you're going to tell me that there's no other site aside from this one site that you can build. Well, look at look at the alternate sites. I mean, they're they were rejected for various reasons. Right. It's um, one, of those one reasons. we had we had a landlord interest that was further north on Middletown Avenue towards the cemetery, but even short of the cemetery, uh, that was rejected by the RF engineer uh, because it was too far north. Also, there were wetlands on that property. There was an Algonquin gas line that had to be. Uh, crossed over as well, buried gas line. So I would invite you to look at the alternate sites, look at the justification and why they were considered. Um, I can't force a landlord to lease to me you, if they're not interested, obviously. I would invite you to look at the impact that it's having on this room and reconsider your decision for this site. What's the concern with the gas line? It was just one of the factors that we looked at. It wasn't like it was killed because of the gas line, but there's a, an Algonquin gas line easement that runs through this property, runs through the whole area. Um, the landlord didn't think he had rights to cross it because of the easement, but even besides that, on its own merit, it was rejected by the RF engineer because it was too far north uh, from the subject or the, uh, the, the coverage, intended coverage area for Horizon. And it's south of the cemetery. It doesn't mean we will not look at the cemetery. We'll take another look at it. We'll talk to the engineers. We'll talk to Mike Freda. We'll get input. We'll certainly keep options open for us. Um, there is a saying to live each day as if it was your last. If this was your last day, is this how you would want to make this decision for everybody? I, think, I, think, I don't think there's one person in here or this whole town that would go for this outside of the person who signed out. Okay. Well, we do realize on social media there are going to be, there's always lashback, right? Plenty of people are, are in favor for it on social media simply because they don't understand. They don't understand. We're in favor for a tower too, just right. not out my window. Like, not right there. Not in a beautiful neighborhood where people spend their life savings to live. <coughs> and have young kids and all the things we've been saying, so I don't have to say it again. But it's just, it's, no offense, pretty damn ugly. <laughs> I don't want to look at it. I noticed that you're not really answering as much as him. <laughs> well, look, what, man, what? Because I think deep down inside in your heart, you know what we're saying. He, he'll come out and say he's biased or whatever. You're not answering any of the questions. Ma'am. I could feel it. If, if there was an opportunity to put the tower three miles away in a highly industrial, commercial, developed area, that's where it would go. Okay, so if Mike work. didn't sign this, so say he didn't want anything to do with it, what would you have done? We'd have to keep putting we'll our keep nose down looking. and looking for an interested landlord, a site that's zonable, constructible, works for the network for Verizon. We'd have to keep looking. The need does not go away just because the landlord happens to say no or they're not interested. We have to keep looking. Nobody's for no, this. There's no nobody's need. for this. There is and I need. hope you're not wasting all their, all our time here. If this is not a done deal. Did Verizon come up with the need or did an individual come up with the need? Verizon, Verizon has to need. Because the residents in the neighborhood don't think there's a need. And Verizon's saying that the only place you can put it is that little spot right there. No Verizon's right. market research says they can make more money if it's there. Horizon evaluates sites that it's presented with, alternative locations, and makes a determination as to whether those sites would satisfy its coverage objectives in an area. Um, are there other parcels perhaps that would? Maybe one of these 22? Perhaps. But as Ray explained, the other 21 sites are not available for some other reason. There was at least one that he mentioned that RF had rejected because they looked at it, they modeled the coverage opportunities there and determined that it wasn't going to satisfy that objective as well as this site does. So I, I think that, that goes into that evaluation. If, if after you speak with the, the first selectman, 
you have alternative sites that you want to have us consider, we'll go through that same evaluation process. It'll be, again, it'll be an evaluation process first and foremost to make sure that a site would work for Verizon. And if it works, how tall does the tower have to be? Um, and then we'll go through and look at, look at the other environmental effects that have to be evaluated as a part of that siting council process. Um, so it's the same exercise that we went through to get to where we are today. Are, are there any of those that fit the bill of the 22 that no. we already looked at? No. Can go back to the there was only previous? one that fit the bill. I, I will tell you that there was a property 40 half mile road. It's in my report. Uh, the landlords were initially interested. We did some work with them um, on the property. And, and then they went kind of dark on me and lost interest. So. Can you go back to, can you go back and that's, that's in the record that's been what, submitted. What about East Haven? No, East Haven, uh, there's some properties in East Haven. I think there were four or five properties that were looked at over the, uh, do you have a copy of the, the technical uh, report? We do. So you, you see the properties that were looked at, you see the reasons for it. Yeah, I just don't know what, you know, I'm not into that kind of data, so that's why I'm asking you. Yeah, each, each property, all 21 properties, um, have a reason for why they were rejected. Those, the dead spots? Mm -hmm. The dead spots in that area? What, are those homeowners or what is that? In, in these areas? I, I don't know what's there. We'd have to overlay this over, a, over a, a, an aerial photograph. But but I'm sure there are residences in those areas. There are, there are that get told dead spots like that? is one of the sites was Mono Beach Elementary School. Our children, actually, pretty much everyone's children have gone or are attending there now. And that was one of the sites that was proposed as, um, you know, possible land site candidate. And the only reason why it was not pursued was because there's an existing elementary school there. Hmm. So with that being said, why would that be the so sole safe. reason for yes. the tower not going there because there's an existing elementary school? If there's no health risk, that's a good question. Well, in the that's a decision. I, I do want to know yeah. the answer to well, that, please. It's right there in my in my report. Yeah, can you can you elaborate on that? The town did not wish to go into a lease with only power. Did you tell oh, them how safe it was? Oh, so we wonder. So, yeah. you, so if everything fit the, the boxes, but the only reason stated in your report is that because there's an existing elementary school. No, the owner has to have interest in entering into a ground lease. In this case, it's town-owned property at, uh, oh, but at 141 Oh, but it says open to leasing to homeland. The town decided not to pursue due to the existing elementary school. Exactly. Right. Because they have concerns. The because they have concerns about, about the town. The town didn't want to do it because they have concerns about the children. I would have pulled my kids right out of that school. If that happened, it says right here, Homeland submits that its proposed facility would not have any significant adverse effects. Okay, they're saying that already. I like to see the statistics on that. All right. However, we're not looking at long term, just like smoking. Do we look at long term effects? Okay. Now the studies of 2020, the new studies. Okay, so there's several thousand published studies from around the world validating what you're talking about. The oncology letter, July 15, 2020. Health risks from radio frequency radiation, including 5G, should be assessed by experts. Conflict of interest and ties to the industry does a disservice. Oh, so where are the experts that you're looking at, beside the FCC? Okay. I, I will. I will. I just will direct you to the FCC's website, no, no, well, where they talk about where they talk about the information that has been presented to them and reviewed on a regular basis, uh, and and that's I'd what like we're to like. See what they review. Again, what what the FCC? If if you want to battle on whether the FCC has established the right standard or not, that's nothing that I can talk to you about, or what what our clients can talk to us about, or what the Connecticut Siting Council can talk to you about. What the Siting Council is obligated to do is require the applicants to demonstrate that we comply with the current standard. If the current standard is wrong or needs to be adjusted, that's something the FCC has to do. And all I said to you this, this evening was that the FCC has made those considerations since 1996 on a regular basis until recently and has determined there's no need to change the standard. So where can you find 
where can you find the studies, okay, that allow them to make <coughs> these decisions? Where are those studies? I think you, you have to reach. Where yeah. are they? Again, you'd have to reach out to the FCC. You'd have to go to the FCC's website where those studies are referenced. You can find them, as you have with some of these international studies, a lot of information on there about RF safety. Um, and those are the studies that the FCC considered. Again, um, I, I can't tell you whether they're right or wrong, but they are the standard. They cherry pick what they want. They are the standard. So that, but when you're presenting the other side of the story, when you're asking for long term, Studies. We'll let you know in 30 years. Or long term. Probably not going to be there. The long thing is, we will never know. know. We won't know. But this is going late. to do in 20, 30 years. It'll, 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 it'll be too late. late. What happened with cigarettes? They said it was safe. Mm -hmm. All right. So, what now? happens when um, property owners do not feel comfortable staying in that area because of this? Is there anything that you do as a corporation, as an organization, to help those property owners who now are subjected to this? structure going up within the vicinity but we no longer feel comfortable and our property value is going to plummet out of our control that's no longer in our control about the property value so how do you support those people who now don't feel comfortable staying but their property value is going to plummet well they don't there's no way to support we don't. We're, don't. Not, okay. we're not we're not under an obligation as a contract I'm sorry and they're a limited liability corporation you know what that means <coughs> okay <coughs> Again, the, the, the carriers and the tower companies uh, who go through the process and are properly permitted to establish these facilities are not responsible for any uh, property None of us are impacts. responsible to help each other, but the community kind of sucks if we don't. <coughs> okay. That's the standard you hold yourself to, right? I got another question. <coughs> probably don't want to answer this. If we got a group of people here. And you're the experts. <clears throat> How can we stop this? Again, I, I think we've, we've talked about a number of, of ways that this community, mm -hmm. the town, the government, your state representatives, they've, they've all been involved inside of council processes before. Um, you can become an active participant in that process. And then you need to convince the site of council that this facility doesn't belong. What if um, how you do that is, is up to okay, you? What if first selectman three <coughs> wanted to become a movie star and we're gonna make a movie about it? And he said it's not going in this town. What would happen? Well oh, you can't say that. Uh, again, ultimately the decision is made by the Connecticut Site and Council. Right. Site and Council needs need to be presented with evidence as to why the facility should not if the Siding Council finds there's a need and makes a determination on environmental effects, you would have to present evidence that would basically, make, basically convince the Siding Council that there is no need and that the environmental effects are too significant. Um, is, is the town notified before a landowner goes into contract? No. What's the, what's the 55 years? Why did the general come out? Yeah, in the, the tower development world, uh, there's some tower companies that do a 100-year lease. Uh, but typically, 55 years, <coughs> um, the carrier's coming to a site. They're making a capital investment. They want to know that the site's going to be around for 25, 30 years to so recoup their the, investment. What happens when the original owner dies? It just automatically goes to the, to the heirs? Yeah, the, uh, the, the lease is, is part of the property. Um, if it were to be sold, the lease would travel to the next owner or to the next heir. And the, the new owner is not out of that contract. Correct. So in, in the event that something happens to the tower, in the last couple of years we've had uh, two tornadoes touch down, microbursts, and the tower comes down and it causes damage, especially to the adjacent farm house and all that stuff. Who's responsible? So, typically towers um, don't fall like trees. They're engineered with what's called a hinge point. Um, if the Cat 5 came through, if that tower was compromised, it would not fall and jump hit its house. It's designed to self-crinkle, self-implode on itself. 
Um, there's obviously liability insurance that we have with our owner, identification and so forth, but uh, typically the towers that you see fail are the lattice towers that have all the cross beams where ice can form on horizontal cross members, has a tremendous amount of weight. With the monopole structure, uh, there's a very, I've never seen a tower fail in, that I've done, uh, that over-engineered, over-engineered. Do you have yes, a date that the landowner uh, signed this contract and entered into this agreement? I, I don't, exactly yeah. I don't share specifics that? on the, that's, that's a matter between, home, and not to be rude or evasive, but that's a contractual matter that, that we do with our landlord. I don't share lease terms. I don't share dates. I don't share financial terms. Um, I just, there's an active agreement in place with the landowner, and I share that it is for 55 years. I don't mind saying that, but... I don't get into dates of when things were executed and so forth. So can, that land, when it goes to a, a new owner, it can't be sub, subdivided either? It's four acres. They can't say that tower is going to stay on its own property and we're going to subdivide the land? Uh, no, the the fact that if the tower were to go through, it's I think roughly a 4.89 acre. We don't take away from development if, if he wants to put a house or other, other structures on the property. He has every right to do that. He'd have to go through the local zoning process here in North Haven uh, in order to do that, but the tower would not prevent him from developing areas outside of our lease area. All we care about is our lease okay. area and access. Which is probably another reason why it's in that front corner <coughs> of the property and not in that 300 feet back or, you know, like you were talking about before, because then all of the underground services would have to go through the middle of the property, which would render any development here uh, future development of that property useless. So you got to put it in that front corner of that property, closest to uh, the road, the main road. Yeah, well, I will tell you, it wasn't picked for to save construction costs. Um, we're challenged with this property being the steep slopes that we have. It makes it very difficult. You can't place the equipment or the tower. It's got to be on a level area. And the, the terrain, if you look on the GIS mapping, Town of North Haven has a great program. You can look at it, hit the contours box. You can see how steep the slope's going up to that ridge line. Yeah, no, I, I, know, the, I know what the property is. I, mean, I, 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 I work for Tilton and Connecticut, so I know that they, they can certainly level that off and get further off of the road, but there's other reasons why. I mean, the bottom line is that, you know, the, the, all, all the legal stuff we talked about, the moral thing, when somebody decided that they were going to lease that property for this giant 150 foot structure or whatever, they, they could have talked to some people in the neighborhood and they didn't. So, you know, a lot of people are not saying what needs to be said, and that was he should have knocked on some doors and let people know what he was going to do. I don't know him that well, so I can give a shit less. I, I just, you know, started living there 20 years ago. A lot of other people feel loyalty to this gentleman, and um, he should have talk to some people and say, hey, this is what I'm considering doing. Because whatever you're leasing it for is not going to make him any richer. But the people that got their life savings into that and have to leave at a deficit, it's going to affect them. That's for damn sure. So it's going to be hard seeing him drive that tractor down the road next time. I wonder if that's in the street. <laughs> <laughs> it's another way to go up on money. That's why he's signing up the song. It's not him. It's, 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 it's yeah. Yeah, like really we're, uh, we're, we're about 10 minutes over our permitted time. I don't see anyone throwing us out. So I'm happy to stay and answer any questions you have. Otherwise, sincerely, thanks for coming out tonight. We appreciate your spending the time with us. Um, stay tuned. Thank you.